welcome to this new edition of Conversations with Lothra. I'm delighted you could be with us this evening. And we are pleased that we have a distinguished guest, uh, Mitch Brittingham, who is executive director of the Oberlin Alumni Association. Mitch, we're delighted that you're here. Thank you very much. And, uh, Glad to be you here. You could work us in, and you've got your Oberlin uh, scarf? scarf there. To and my Oberlin ring. Oh, very good. Oh, good. <laughs> Which I can't so see. So we're, we're getting yeah. into this here. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me ask you a question first. Um, Midge is really Marjorie, right. calling all the official. Where did Midge come from? Oh, I had that nickname ever since I was a young child. And um, I think it was given to me by classmates in grammar school. Mm -hmm. And I chose it to use as my business name as the alumni director because everyone who knew me at Oberlin knew me as Midge. And mm -hmm. they would have no idea who this Marjorie mm -hmm. bad enough to have a new name with my married name, but all of a sudden to be Marjorie Brittingham, who is that person? <laughs> yeah. So I kept it. Sounds good. Um, and you graduated from Oberlin in class of 60, I believe, right. English major, English Phi major. Beta Kappa. Right. Boy. And uh, you've been alumni director, what am I, am I right, 24, going on 25 years? 25 years in February. And then mm. wonderful, quarter of a century. So <laughs> Don't you say it that way. <laughs> yeah, you, well, yes, but you survived uh, in yes, a difficult, survived. yes, 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 yes. Um, now, I've got a question for you. Is it, somebody told me just recently that two-thirds of all of the alumni, well, I'll put that in different, two-thirds of all the graduates of Oberlin College are still alive. Would that be about right? You know, I actually don't have any idea because I don't, the classes were, were much smaller in the 19th century. I mean, some classes only had 30 people in them. And, um, a lot of uh, former students never actually got degrees either. They, were, they attended and then didn't graduate. Um, I think it's very possibly true, but We'd have to go to Ross Peacock, <laughs> our institutional statistical that man. That comes under useless trivia. Yeah. Well, but I mean, I wish I knew it. I could have Somebody just, asked, you know. asked me, and I said, well, I don't know. Well, we'll find out, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Now, where did you grow up? What was your hometown? I grew up in northern New Jersey, mm -hmm. suburb of New York City. Mm -hmm. uh, Ramsey, then we moved to Hohokus, and I attended Ridgewood High School. And what brought you to Oberlin for undergraduate work? Uh, actually, it's interesting you say, ask me because I just received news last week of the death of a woman who graduated in the class of 1958, and she was close to my best friend in ninth grade. And then in the end of 10th grade, she announced she was going off to college, and she had received one of the Ford uh, Accelerated Student Grants that were popular in the mm -hmm. 50s. Mm -hmm. And so she came to Oberlin after two years of high school, and therefore was two years ahead of me. And she kept saying, you love Oberlin, you'll love Oberlin. So I came out to visit Oberlin in the middle of, not quite a blizzard in February, but on the way back to New Jersey, it definitely was a blizzard. We had to stop at a motel somewhere in Pennsylvania to get back to New Jersey. I was with a friend and her mother her, the friend did not go to Oberlin. <laughs> <laughs> she was frozen out, so to I speak. guess that was it. The, <laughs> the blizzard experience was too much for it. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Uh, what attracted you to the position of director of the Alumni Association? Well, here again, friends seem to do good things for me. Um, Becky Presty, mm -hmm. you know, as you know, you know her in town. She's class of 59, good friend, and she had seen the advertisement in the alumni magazine, which I had not seen yet. I had been working at Christ Church, and then the parish had the, the split, and mm -hmm. the position was discontinued, and I was thinking, well, I'll need to find something else. And uh, she said, I think you would be good. Now, the position that I applied for was the assistant director. That was the, op the open position. And I was in that position for, well, from February till June, and then the director at that time, Jack Purvis, uh, was let go, and I, I applied, but you know that took a while uh, for the process to go through. So I didn't become alumni director till the year following. Mm -hmm. So you were sort of interim there for Yeah, I was acting, actually. I had the title of acting. Mm -hmm. And um, 
uh, the search committee wanted the candidate to have a PhD, which I don't have. And uh, they felt that the person needed to have the respect of the faculty. Well, we all know at Oberlin that if you are an administrator, you could have five PhDs and nobody would <laughs> respect you because <laughs> you're an administrator. <laughs> so, so uh, and meanwhile, I knew a lot of faculty. You know, we had children. I had Bob Longsworth, who was then the dean, write a reference for me. Mm -hmm. Eventually, uh, the search committee, which was alumni, mm -hmm. decided that they they could see I could do the job, and they figured having the PhD w wouldn't make or break me. <laughs> so. And I read something the other day to the effect that an alum said that they could, nobody could imagine the alumni office without <laughs> Mitch Brittingham there. So uh, well. it looks like you've done a pretty good job. <laughs> Longevity is at least the secret. <laughs> <laughs> How big a staff do you have? I have two other professional staff, Dale Preston, class of 83, and Margaret Erickson, class of 62. And then we'll, we have three administrative assistants. <laughs> These people do different things, each have mm -hmm. tasks, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. various. Mm -hmm. Is there, this is showing my ignorance when I ask this, is there a basic philosophy about alumni relations, how it operates or should operate, not just at Oberlin, but generally? Well, I think the basic philosophy, at least at private colleges, it would be different at large state-supported schools is that involving the alumni in the life of the college will help to also support the college financially, although that is not the only reason you would involve alumni. Alumni have a lot more to offer besides just money. But money is important, mm -hmm. let's face it. And so uh, if we can involve them as volunteers, then they will be much more knowledgeable about the college and hopefully we'll appreciate what we're doing here and mm -hmm. become supporters. Uh, alumni uh, publications frequently refer to the percentage of alumni who give money to the college. Try to get mm -hmm. that up all the time, mm -hmm. I gather. Mm -hmm. And also, there's another category, those listed as lost. Uh, so let me break that down. Do you know offhand uh, just roughly what it is for Oberlin? Uh, last year, our giving percentage, the percentage of alumni who give, was 41 percent, and that is uh, not where we want it to be. Uh, some other schools that we compete against are higher. Mm -hmm. um, what do you do to stimulate it? Well, I wish we knew the secret to that because we certainly have been trying. We have a. This is done through the Oberlin Fund mm -hmm. uh, in the development area, and. Uh, where where it really falls down is in the most recent classes. And part of that is because they are moving around for many years. Sometimes we still have them listed at their parents' address because they, you know, they're in grad school, they're in this job, they're in that city. Um, they're tied up in their lives, and Oberlin doesn't really come across their landscape very much. Uh, the Their friends do. They're in touch with their Oberlin friends, but um, lots of times it's not till the fifth reunion that we can uh, get those people more involved. In and some Oberlin. of them, I suppose, are not able really financially to do much. Well, but, you know, people. everyone can give ten dollars. Oh, okay. Yes, We're not exactly. talking about the size of gifts. I, see. I mean, okay. in size of gifts and in total amount, Oberlin does well. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's that percentage of recent grads. And, you know, to be honest, some, we suspect that some of these schools, in order to help themselves in ratings and in other ways, to, uh, don't count some people, count in quotation marks. <laughs> so I don't know. Over, never do no, that. No, no, actually no, we no, don't. We're no, very no, honest. <laughs> Probably too honest for our own good. Um, you lost asked about lost alumni. alumni. Are there many? Um, there are not that many graduates who are lost. I mean, there are some people who ask not to receive mail. We call those the wish no mails. Mm -hmm. um, and there are some people who were uh, never graduated, who might have only been here a month or six weeks or something. And um, if we don't hear from them, 
eventually we code them as lost. And then there's a category that we call in the office as no good. <laughs> and that is, says nothing about their character. They're wonderful people, no doubt. <laughs> but it's just that they are momentarily lost. Mm -hmm. And we have ways of trying to find those. The best way is through their social security number. Mm -hmm. And we have those for um, quite a few alums. We don't have them for all of our alumni. And you do you ever run lists and say, do you know where these people are? Or is that we do do that, but we find that the, you know, we don't get uh, really good results uh, because we'll get somebody writing back in and say, well, last I knew he was in New York. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> well, that's a great help. Yeah. <laughs> so so, if it was 25 years ago. And, you know, yeah. and if it's a name that's common, John Smith or something like that, you'll never find them. Mm -hmm. Even with the, so that's why the social security number mm -hmm. is very helpful. Mm -hmm. You do a lot of travel, don't you? Yes. <laughs> is, this, is this to uh, visit alumni clubs or? I do both. Um, I uh, go to what I call the sort of major alumni events around the country. We, uh, in our regional areas, you know, the big cities. Uh, I uh, also do have taken on some development travel in, since our campaign has started. Uh, calling on a few individual alums that I've gotten to know well from my other travels, which are the alumni tours. And, uh, so you go two or three of those a year, too, yes. don't you? So you get to see the world for free. That's right, I mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. Now, don't forget that I'm working on those Oh, tours. I know that, I know that, I know that. But, uh, <laughs> but, you, I, but you have, have this it, marvelous opportunity. Right. And it's a wonderful way to work. <laughs> If you can stand the pace, which must be hectic sometimes, well, keeping I'll, people rounded up and all that. Sort yes, of thing. yes, yes, we've had a number of people lost. I just had a guy write me the other day. And he was signing up for our Costa Rica trip, and he had gotten lost. He and his wife on a small island in the Stockholm archipelago, and uh, we had to hold the boat for him. And they had gone the wrong direction. They'd just gotten their directions mixed up. They knew where they were supposed to be back at the boat at four. They just marched off you know, the other way. <laughs> and uh, so he said, can I go on this trip if I promise we won't get lost? <laughs> How many alumni clubs are there? Well, these things go up and down. I mean, we just now have two new regional, we call them regions. Regions. Regional okay. coordinators come on board. One for Lorraine County, by oh, the way. Oh, is there one mm -hmm. now? Just now. Because there wasn't Paul, Paul for a while. Troyhoff who you may have oh, yes. know. I know the name. Uh, mm -hmm. Doctor here, was a retired doctor here in town, class mm -hmm. of 64. Um, but, um, so we have about 25. I mean, what we want to make sure we have is, is alumni activity in, in our 10 largest areas, which are basically the East Coast and the West Coast in Chicago. Now the ones I get, get from Illinois yeah. are all revolving around football events. I well, assume that's not the that case in Oakland. No. Actually, well, we have had now a couple of football events. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> but um, it's those we've uh, started, I don't know if this will continue, playing Swarthmore. We've had played them the last two years. Uh, and when we played in Philadelphia, was at, uh, we had a, an alumni event. And then we play Pomona. And when Pomona, when we had played Pomona this fall, um, we had an alumni event. And they're not those sort of traditional tailgate drinking parties. Mm -hmm. They're basically people getting together and wearing their oval and name tags. <laughs> <laughs> and, sh and, you know, cheering on our team. <laughs> <laughs> And you do quite a bit of fundraising, as you said. You, you get well, into not that directly, though. Mm -hmm. I don't come in and uh, devise a strategy for a certain donor and ask them uh, for money. I'm really the kind of friend raiser, mm -hmm. is the term in the trade. Mm -hmm. I, so I find you, out what they're interested in, whether they have questions about Ogilvy, uh, if they have concerns that I can answer or that I can find someone to answer for them. That's the role I play. Mm -hmm. And of course, the happier the alumni body happens to be, probably has a positive relationship on fundraising. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, how do you, do you approach uh, or involve current students at all in alumni things? We have a lot of interaction with current students, but we don't have what some schools have, which is a young alumni association or a student alumni association. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, we sort of send out feelers to try one of those organizations, and it just is not what Oberlin students are interested in. 
but where we do have a lot of interaction is on the career level. Um, we've had what we call alumni student exchanges uh, several years in a row at, during our council meeting with, when alumni will do uh, career panels in different uh, fields. Uh, we've also, uh, this career office has been very helpful in setting this up. We've had alumni come in and do mock interviews and then they give feedback to the student afterwards. And the alumni also help you with winter term projects, mm -hmm. don't they? The alumni can sponsor winter term projects or uh, not officially sponsor because that's for the faculty, but uh, suggest them and uh, and then also house them mm -hmm. because sometimes that's the drawback. If somebody offers a project in Montana, if they don't have housing, they can't mm -hmm. take it. So. Mm -hmm. um, we promote that also. And the conservatory sends musical things out, doesn't it? Groups out occasionally yeah, for alumni. Yeah, occasionally. Mm -hmm. Remember, we just mm -hmm. had a big event at the Getty mm -hmm. Museum in last week. And Did you go out to that? Yeah. Unfortunately, I couldn't go, but um, there were there were many staff I members understand, out there. I understand. The trustee <laughs> so, meeting so even it was there. Yeah, yes, the trustees yes, yes. were there. I mean, the conservatory was there. Oh, that was the Overland Orchestra conducted by John Williams. So that was mm -hmm. very exciting mm -hmm. for everyone involved. Yes. Let's uh, talk about commencement weekend. Ah. That's your big <laughs> focus it. of the year, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, the, mm -hmm. And is that yeah. getting more and more involved all the time, or is it pretty it much seems, come out? Or? Well, the basic uh, skeleton schedule is generally the same, but more and more events get piggybacked on. You know, a student group decides they're going to give a concert here or there. So if we have the space, and we'll list them on the program. Uh, we, we like to run not a three-wing circus, it's like about a five-ring, ten-ring circus at Chris over the weekend. Now, you now have a thing called cluster right. reunions. Tell us right. about that. That's a fairly new phenomenon, isn't it? Well, it's new, but it's not new to Oberlin, because when I arrived in the Oberlin alumni office, they had started cluster. the cluster system. It's, for us, it started in the early 70s. Oh. And uh, basically, it's three classes that are that reunion together. And the classes that uh, stay separate are the 25th and the 50th. So all the other reunions, the 5th, 10th, 15th. Okay. And since there's three, that means uh, we won't have a 15th reunion every year. We'll have one every three years. It, we have a wonderful chart that was done by the computer department years ago. And unfortunately, it, I think it dies off in like the year 20, 20 or something, yeah. and in, w in which case we'll have no more reunions. <laughs> we can't function without that show. Well, that'll be about the time you probably say I'm going to retire. Yeah. Won't it, in 20, a little sooner than that, I think. <laughs> a little sooner. Uh, in relation to commencement weekends, uh, some colleges now, including my own alma mater, Worcester, uh -huh. are having the alumni activities a weekend later. Is that a trend? That's, that actually is very common, and I don't know if it's a trend or if it's just what people do um, now. Um, part of the reason for that is just the logistics of putting on a weekend. Um, our, our alumni association, when approached about this, said no way. <laughs> they wanted this big gathering. Of, and, and the seniors, we can welcome the seniors into the Alumni Association. The, the, uh, all, a lot of students, of course, stay partly to see their friends graduate, and then they can also earn money by working at the event. So our alumni get a big sense of students. And of course, all the uh, entertainment events that we do couldn't be done without mm -hmm. the students here. Mm -hmm. So uh, we figure it would actually cost us a lot more money to separate the two events. And so even though the entire non-teaching staff is exhausted <laughs> and uh, finished by the by Monday afternoon, <laughs> in a zombie state, because uh, the buildings and grounds crew are, they probably work hardest than anyone on that weekend. They're terrific in food service. Mitch, let's take a break. We're going to take about a minute break right. here. And, uh, We'll be right back. Just How are we doing? Okay.
These days, the media seems to move faster than ever. No sooner does something happen than the TV cameras are there covering it. There before almost anyone else. Almost. Please support the American Red Cross. The need is real. The time is now. Help can't wait. Welcome back. Our guest is uh, Midge Brittingham, who is the executive director of the Old Women Alumni Association. And we've been having a great time here talking about alumni things. Uh, let me ask you about alumni directories. Those, they seem to come, they come about every decade. Is that for? Well, uh, sub schools are very religious about this and have them on in every five year cycle. Uh, we tend to do them when we get around to it. <laughs> uh, mainly because it's not a favorite project of mine, right. and it puts a lot of stress on the I was going to say, it must be records horrendous, people. I would think. Even well, of course, computers. all of this is computerized, but it still is uh, difficult. And uh, we were scheduled to do another one. Your last soon. one was 94, wasn't it? <laughs> right. Yes. So yes, you wouldn't do it right. unless you were going to be we were earlier be on the five-year. Oh, go to the five year, I see. But um, mm -hmm. we made a decision at the at our June meeting to not do one, a printed directory. Mm -hmm. I mean, they cost quite a bit, almost fifty dollars. And uh, we have now an online directory that anyone can get into who chooses to join our online community, which is free. Mm -hmm. You have to write in, so. It, uh, it does exclude the people who don't have computers and are not on the web, and we know that. Mm -hmm. But I haven't had anybody actually ask, say, when's that directory coming out? I really miss it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if we get a groundswell of 40 people, <laughs> we'll reconsider, maybe. <laughs> well, I know I use one quite, fre yeah. quite frequently, and I haven't come across any hardly anything is up to now. It's not right. It might be an apartment number or something, but usually is fairly close. So. Well, the addresses, you know, are out of date mm -hmm. the minute it's out uh, because mm -hmm. it's always somebody moving. Mm -hmm. uh, the one thing that's good for is to get spellings of names and to get class years and s spouses, although, mm -hmm. of course, the spouse can change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know. That's been known to happen. Yeah. Kind of <laughs> <That's right. disappear. laughs> yeah. Um, let me ask you about keeping track of alumni. It must be a tremendous challenge. It is. Um, <laughs> and over one people seem to be. <laughs> do, you, do you hear daily from alumni? Is there, is there a constant mm -hmm. flow of communication oh, yeah. coming in? Not that you necessarily would begin, but that come from alumni? Or? Oh, yeah. Well, we have uh, the computer hmm. and email has changed everything. I mean, in the last 10 years. I'll probably hear from anywhere from 15 to 20 people a day through email. Of course, we have the mail. Um, and these are not all personal things to me, but they come. And then the, the other staff are also receiving. Mm -hmm. People are changing. Well, luckily, people do actually tell us what their new addresses are. Mm -hmm. Do you have uh, much trouble keeping up with people who have died? That is, the death notices? Uh, we have a clipping service. Mm -hmm. College subscribes to that. It's out of college relations. Mm -hmm. So if Oberlin is mentioned in print, we eventually get a copy of that. So there's a, a lag there because, of course, the clipping service has to read all these newspapers to wherever they are located and then send them to us. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we appreciate it when people like you <laughs> clip locally <laughs> and give us things right away or call us and tell us. Uh, and a lot of 
the fa family, family, families, families I wonder if families were good about this. Mm -hmm. They are, but it always amazes me that we'll send something to someone about their reunion, and we'll finally get back somebody scribbling on the envelope, he died, you know, 14 years ago. Hmm. And all this time we've been sending him mail, you mm -hmm. know, they... <laughs> <This>? <laughs> yeah. But fortunately you haven't had an answer. Yeah, that would That right. would put us into a whole other category. Now, uh, the name changes oh, yeah. must be interesting. Yeah. Um, divorces, oh. deaths, mm -hmm. and what about the Mrs., Miss, and Ms.? Getting well, that sorted out. On, we send out a questionnaire every five years to each person. I mean, it's on the reunion cycle, so um, not everybody gets question, mm -hmm. questioned in one year. And on them, we they ask how they want to have their name. And people change. You know, it used to be people did want to be Mrs. John Brown, but now they're saying, I want to be Nancy Brown, mm -hmm. <laughs> and they don't care, and they can have down doctor, they can have miss, they can have missus, they can have miss, anything they want. Mm -hmm. But it's that interim between the last questionnaire and the next one that sometimes uh, they change their minds and we don't know. Mm -hmm. There was a time when we automatically would change a woman's name to the name of her husband. This was probably 15, 20 years ago. Of course, now we don't do that. But it takes a while to find out how that new, that new uh, married person wants to be called mm -hmm. with all the hyphenated combinations. The, some people choose a completely different name for both their themselves, mm -hmm. husband and wife. Uh, we haven't gotten to the point yet, have we, where a couple with a hyphenated name have a child with a hyphen but then marry somebody else with a and they want all four names. You haven't got to no, that. No, in fact most yet. of those hyphenated named children end up with one name. Do they? I notice that. It's just a couple of half two names. Well that's a blessing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Right. So the child has to decide I suppose which one to yeah. take of the Well children. usually it's uh, it's on the birth certificate. Mm -hmm. Oh I see. That's okay. where they make that decision. But we do now have children, as my own grandchildren, where their last names are their mother's name, last name. So this, of course, drives genealogists crazy mm. <laughs> in, in the future. <laughs> but I'm not worried about it. No, we know where they are. Yeah. Oberlin has an alumni magazine. Right. Quarterly, I believe. Quarterly. Mm -hmm. And there's now a conservatory one twice a year? Is that? Uh, yeah, it's a con it, it grew out of the conservatory newsletter, uh -huh. but it's... Um, now, are you responsible for both of these in any way? I'm not responsible for any of that, actually. They come out of college really. But you send material to oh, them? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I send over envelopes every couple times a week yeah. full of stuff. And uh, so they are then separate from the alumni association. Right. Well, we do have a magazine that used to be called the Magazine Advisory Committee that is alumni. Now we have a communications committee since the uh, electronic communications mm -hmm. have been added. And those are all uh, professional media people on that committee. And uh, they meet with the editor, they meet with Al Moran, the vice president for college relations. And so that they're not just publishing in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. Historical question. <laughs> One time, am I correct that the Oberlin alumni was independent of the college? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that was. Uh, I'm not even sure when. I should have probably looked that up before I came, but uh, not important. I way before my time. I, was, yeah, I know it was long ago. <laughs> yeah. and uh, they had to raise their own money, mm -hmm. and that was long before there was such a thing as development and fundraisers. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, Oberlin had the hall bequest and the hall money, and uh, for a long time, its endowment supported every part of the funding of the college, mm -hmm. and. Um, and the annual fund actually started out of what the Alumni Association raised for its own expenses, which was a very small operation. <laughs> uh, and then the rest of it they gave to the college as a gift. So, well, they hired that association would hire the director and or secretary or whatever. Yeah, it was called, called alumni secretary. secretary. Right. In those days, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about the end of that and changing it? Was I think contentious the, as far as you know with some of the uh, no I think they weren't able to raise enough money oh, I see. they had to uh, ask the college to bail them out eventually mm -hmm. and uh, that 
and we're we have the same situation really as all probably every private college in the country of the alumni association not raising its own funds but being funded by the college as a department in the college mm -hmm. which has its strengths as opposed to its weakness that's right word. you know your salary will get paid but mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, sometimes when you're doing things that <laughs> the college or the president yeah. doesn't want uh, mm -hmm. it can be tricky uh, let's talk about the alumni association in your office and college admissions Mm -hmm. There's a blend between these two, isn't there? That's it? right. Well, uh, Oberlin was one of the very first schools, I think it started in 1969, to have alumni involved in the admissions process. And in the beginning, they basically would do uh, interviews when prospective students couldn't get to the campus for an interview. Alumni, a group of people called admissions reps, <laughs> uh, were, and uh, asked to do those and they got quite organized you know we had reps and we had a coordinator of reps in the big cities and now their job has changed somewhat the interviewing is still done but we like the students to come to campus because they get a much better flavor of Oberlin than talking to an alum and now uh, we look to the reps for recruiting for uh, assisting on putting on parties for preliminary applicants and for the admitted students. Um, in their homes, usually. Yeah, or, right, or, or, though, or locally, hosting, or sometimes locally. if it's a very large group like New York City, they'll be in a public place and hosting those. Do you have any trouble getting alums to do this? Oh, no, no, in fact, you know, we usually have too many. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, some, it, it's one of those things, they'll volunteer a lot in this area and maybe there's not enough people in, you know, Idaho. Mm -hmm. but, um, but then again, there may be too many in Idaho, and we don't have enough students interested in Oberlin. So it, it depends on how really uh, proactive the alum wants to be. And do you happen to know off the top here that it's not fair to throw these things at you without <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I yeah. just, just say, no, you don't know. And I'll ask the question <laughs> yeah, now. Go ahead. Uh, but we're on safe ground yeah. if you say you didn't know. Um, is there a percentage? It's pretty continual or changing of uh, children alumni who, of alumni who are making up oh, the admissions. Oh, that I do know. <laughs> I didn't um, put that very yeah. well. But no, but you, what we call what legacy. 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 Yeah. Yes. Now, in the old days, <laughs> I'd say 20 years ago, <laughs> we would have as many as 75 legacy students in a freshman class. Now. Um, then one year we got as low as 25, and I talked about this with some of my colleagues at, at similar schools said the same thing. Uh, and now we're starting to creep up again. And in fact, we have been in discussion, we haven't started it yet, of doing, working with the admissions office on a special legacy program. Mm -hmm. Do they get, uh, I don't want you to give away state secrets here, but do they get any special attention admissions or? Well, up, actually, we want to give them some special attention. Um, uh, not that we would admit someone who wasn't uh, uh, right for Overland, mm -hmm. but uh, if they are do, they do have an alumni connection, then that is considered one point among many okay, in right. their in their favor. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're apt to look look at a second ch chance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Let me ask you a sort of a final question, because we're getting near the end of this, believe it or not. <laughs> it's a fun time. Are there specific challenges uh, to colleges today with which alumni could be of help or are being of help? Well, of course, the very top one is always the financial, especially private schools. Uh, and uh, right now when we're seeing great prosperity in the country uh, and people making large fortunes. Uh, it's amazing to me to read some of the gifts that are being given to colleges, $20 million gift, mm -hmm. this, that gift. Uh, Oberlin itself had two $11 million gifts last year. Um, out of the blue or? Well, almost. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, not quite out of the blue, but uh, from an anonymous donor. Mm -hmm. uh, 
And, uh, well, of course, there was the famous Hong Kong one. Wasn't that's right. That, and this is not the Hong Kong they one. Have, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They never did. I guess it was never publicized who that was. But no, we don't Hong actually. I don't believe we do know the yeah. individual. We just look. You're, you're hoping if this, if this broadcast reaches Hong Kong, <laughs> if there are more of them out there, that would be fine. Is right. that right? Yeah. <laughs> well, the president has gone to Hong Kong yeah. a couple times. Looking so. hopeful. Yeah. <laughs> Standing out there in the airport. <laughs> no, not really. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think uh, the financial, uh, there's also the admissions competition amongst mm -hmm. private schools. Which is increasing, isn't it? Oh, yeah. And uh, again, it falls back on money. The schools that can give the best scholarships. Uh, of course, the conservatory is very much in the scholarship game. Mm -hmm. uh, the best. Trip. Are there alumni scholarships? You mean for alumni? No. For no. alumni children or anything of that sort? No. no. Uh, we have some fellowships for graduates that are for uh, that alumni have given for mm -hmm. you know a woman graduate going into teaching or something like that. But there isn't an alumni one for, no, say, Elmira, New York, or I, your favorite oh, state, well, Idaho. All right. No, we do actually have some alumni club scholarships. Okay. Uh, but only one, Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot to None find in a Idaho. scholarship. <laughs> no. <laughs> we only have 12 people there. Mm -hmm. I think we, he's stimulating us. Oh, we have a phone call, do we? Okay. Let's see. My hand. <laughs> Good evening. You're on the air with Mitch Brittingham. Lost it? I guess we lost Tell it. Tell him to call again. Call again, <laughs> yes, yes. Unless ha it's a heckler. Yeah. <laughs> Have you any final comments as we wind this down? Well, I thank you for having me. I, it's been fun to talk about well, it. Well, it's a great Usually, fun for me. Uh, you know, the day-to-day -day work is so consuming that you don't get a I don't get a chance to sit mm -hmm. back and think about what I've done. Mm -hmm. And you do it tremendously. And how much out. fun I, I have had at it. Mm -hmm. And you still do enjoy it, don't you? I still enjoy it. I'm getting older and tireder. My body's wearing out. <laughs> but your Spirit is not. But your mind is there. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> the mind is going too. <laughs> well, that I that I think there may be some, no one else calling some of us, in after some that. Some of us all left. Uh, yeah, that may have finished any phone calls. Yes, for both of us. <laughs> yes. Uh, the, the mind. Everyone just but before us we up. break it up, though, mm -hmm. I w end this. I would like to give you our mug. Oh, great! This is the uh, conversations with Ultra Mug. Well, not there's too a, many have a, this, there's right? A, there's a um, smudge there. Good <laughs> heavens. <laughs> but at any rate, there we are. We're glad to have, have you have that. I hope it. you'll enjoy using it and thinking mm. of the program. And well, it's a, a prize. And uh, we thank you so very, very much for having oh, been you. our guest tonight. Enjoyed it's it. been great Enjoyed fun. Uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us this evening. And we will be back on the last Thursday in November, which I think is the 30th, uh, for our next uh, interview with in an interesting guest. So until that uh, time comes, uh, this is Richard Lothrop saying thank you again for joining us, and good evening. <laughs>